home seller tips. Good afternoon, everybody. We're on a Friday here. And like one of the things I love to do is look at articles and look at what people have written and that Google has ranked uh, for advice for home buyers and home sellers. Uh, because to me, it's, it's kind of funny. I'm one of those people from before I was an agent that I, I hated real estate agents and um, I didn't want to be bothered by them. I thought they were pushy and I thought they were, were terrible. And that kind of influenced how I behave as an agent. Um, when I became an agent, there were a lot of things that I saw and that I understood uh, quite differently. But one of those things that I try to bring uh, to my office and to my brokerage is if you have a question and you want an honest, unvarnished opinion, I'll give you one. Uh, and that that runs the, the gamut for pretty much everything. I typically on a, like, like I, I probably won't spend a whole lot of time on, like if you want to know your home, what your home would sell for, probably not going to spend a whole lot of time on that unless we've signed a listing ag agreement, just because I only have so many hours in the day and to get a good, a good comp and to get good comparable sales and to do the research takes time. Um, even if you're, you know, even if the house is three doors down, but, uh, you know, if, if you're like, if you're, you know, need a contractor or if you have a, a question about how your title is set up, I, I'll certainly, if I don't know the answer, I'll certainly put you in touch with the people that, uh, that do know. That being said, uh, I think, you know, everybody goes to the internet first. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to call an agent. No one wants to, no one wants to put anybody else out really. So I don't, I don't have a problem with people going online and searching around. Uh, the only the only problem I have is you're, when you're searching for an answer that you want versus, uh, you know, searching to get the answer. For instance, uh, if you type in Google, can I buy a house with terrible credit? Well, someone's going to say yes, and it's going to be ranked in the top 10, 10 search results. There's no question. Should you? <laughs> it's a whole different issue. Uh, and so, you know, as long as you're using Google to, to where it makes sense, I'm, I'm good with it. So uh, the article today is, uh, I think it's like seven or eight first-time home seller tips. I thought we could go over them and see um, kind of if I'm in agreement with the article or, or not. And so here it is. And uh, this, particular, uh, this particular one says, real estate tips for a first time home seller. And the reason why they use um, a first time home seller is probably because uh, after you've done it once, you've kind of got a pretty good idea how it goes, um, depending on depending on the market. But as it says in the first paragraph, it says selling a home is very different from buying a home. Buying a home generally involves emotions and feelings, but selling a home typically centers on what listing agents like to call, call maximizing profit potential. Um, but really, that's not the way I look at it. I look at it like this. When you're working as a buyer's agent and when you're buying a home, you're not, you're not paying the commission. There's nothing for you to pay. You're paying for a mortgage. You're, you're paying for lending, but you're not paying the agent. That, that agent's being paid by the seller. Now, you can argue all you want to about whether that's right or wrong or how it should change. Or, I mean, there's lawsuits and everything else about that. But that's not the point. When you're a young buyer and you didn't pay anything, and then all of a sudden when you go to sell and you see how much the sellers have listed, you know, that they're going to pay the agents for, you, you realize real quick, like, oh, you know, this is, this is going to be different. And so, you know, along with that, I'm just going to try and uh, – you know, just go with the headlines and we'll just, we'll just see, uh, if, if I agree. So the first one is price your home accurately. And so I agree 100%. And, uh, it's, it's very important. And 
just recently I lost a listing for this this very reason, and, and here's why. The house was likely to bring between four hundred twenty and forty thousand dollars if everything went right. The best comp in the neighborhood was three hundred and eighty thousand uh, dollars, and this this house had some differences. It was better, but it was going to be tough. Uh, and the seller wanted to come to market at four hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, at this price, the chances of finding just that one perfect buyer was very slim. Uh, the seller felt like I was less than enthusiastic about the listing price, and so we parted ways. Now. Um, you know, as I've always said, the seller has every right to list the property for as much as they want to. I, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. The problem I was running into is, is there's no way I'm going to be able to pull that number when, I'll, even if I, even if I could get somebody under contract, if they have a mortgage, the bank's going to come in and, and hit them on the appraisal. And you say, well, what if the person doesn't have an appraisal clause? You know, great. But when they see the appraisal and it comes in like that low, and, I, and it, that house isn't going to bring that. There were a lot of reasons why. So uh, anyway, my philosophy is this. You price your home where you think it would sell. Don't overthink it. If you do price your home too low, you'll be leaving money on the table. But especially in this market, if you come to the market too high, buyers sense that you're being greedy and they will penalize you. The more days the house stays on the market, the less the selling price will be. And to, to an extent, the more it's going to cost you. If you're still paying mortgage payments on a house for a month or two, more than you have to, that's lost money. So you want to sell the house quick. You want to sell it at, at the right price, at the maximum price you can sell it for. Um, but if you go over, you're going to be in a bad spot. Uh, and so that's my philosophy. So that's, again, that's something I think you should consider when you're uh, talking to, if you're interviewing agents, uh, stop asking like a commission question or stop asking like, uh, should you know, should I do this on the house? Start asking like what the agent thinks and how the agent's going to respond to issues. Not, not how the agent handles objections from you. Just trust me on that one. So, uh, oh, I'll tell you why. Because people, agents learn scripts all the time. And, and agents think of an objection as if they can overcome all of your objections, then, the, then you will magically give them the listing. And uh, I don't feel like, again, my philosophy is it doesn't work that way. Uh, and, you know, other people most likely way more successful than I do say, say it would. So if you want to work with that kind of person, go for it. Um, the next one is home staging boosts selling power and appeal. And I agree with that. However, put it into some context. If your home and furnishings are gorgeous, just clean up and organize. Uh, there's no reason for in this market for you to uh, pay for staging. It's a, it's a very delicate issue, and it's, a, it's very much an experience issue. Uh, when I go to houses that haven't had any improvements done for 20 or 30 years, we might just be better off with no furniture or staging at all. Uh, think of it like this. Let's say your house should sell for $300,000 without staging, and staging will cost you about 5000 you aren't likely to get anything more than the 300000 even with the staging, so proceed without it. It's definitely a judgment call, and it would be good if you trusted your agent on this one. Uh, if, you, if you talk to most staging companies, they will say you should stage your house. If you talk to most agents, I think they would say you should stay, st stage your house. But it's, it's a question of what is that staging, and and you know, what is the market? And, you know, it gets a little, it's not as easy as you would think. Uh, and you got to be careful with the staging too. If it looks fake, people see through that really quick. So I'm, I'm, I wait and see the house before I make any sort of judgments. And then we can, we talk with the seller about what they want and what, what makes sense. That's the way you should, you should, Look at staging. Number three is the best day to list your home. And this is an interesting, this is an interesting one over here. So uh, this time period will vary depending on your local community, the weather, time of year, and a host of other factors, including the state of your present real estate market. And so I do, I do agree with this 100%. In St. Louis, the typical hot time for buying and selling is between about the first week of April and about the end of July knowledgeable sellers will usually try to time the market this way. 
In the other months, usually buyers don't come out as much. However, in this current selling season, it's still very strong. Um, another consideration is the holidays. Labor Day weekend is coming up this weekend, for example, and I have a listing that we will not make active until after the holiday. Over the years, I've found that agents don't like to work on holidays and buyers tend to not want to go look at houses, which I believe gives you less of a chance to get a good sale price. Even weekends that rain or snow can affect traffic, which affects the prob probabilities of a great sale. Now, in St. Louis, I'm not trusting a weather report seven days out. But I'm just telling you, based on my experience, will there be agents that work on the, on the holidays? Yes. Will there be buyers that go? Yes. But it won't be as many. And I really do believe that the more people that see, the more exposure that you have on your house, the better chance you have of selling it for the price that you want. So that's that. Number four, ask your agent's standard real estate commission. And I think this is an interesting tip as well. I would agree. Uh, for some, this might be a biased question in favor of the real estate agent. And so uh, I can definitely see that, okay? But as an agent, I think it's a great point. Think about what your agent is providing for listing your home. Ask to look at their marketing package. Many times I'm competing with an agent who is going to do far less to get your house sold, but you have no idea because you're too price conscious. There isn't anything wrong with that as long as you have some knowledge about what agents actually do. An interesting quote from the article that says, don't try to pit agents against each other to compete for your commission or you'll increase the chances you'll end up with a weasel and you certainly don't deserve a weasel. Now, oddly enough, without reading this article you know, ahead of time, uh, I have a different phrase and my phrase is people who are looking for something usually get what they deserve. Go find the cheapest agent in town and good luck with that. Uh, but don't go on the message boards afterwards and complain about what happened. Uh, I, I know of at least three agents that uh, said that, you know, listing a home was too expensive and they were going to cut the commission. And so they started a low or flat fee listing uh, offices. And within a year or two, they were either broke or switched to a full commission model, um, model because they couldn't make it. Now, does that happen with everybody? No. But it's very fascinating. Uh, what she said about this that you don't you know you, there, you'll increase the chance it'll increase the chance you'll end up with a weasel and, and that is that is pretty spot on that's a very good very good point uh, number five be flexible with home showings and so um that i agree with 100 percent. and and i want to i want to explain it this way okay look at it from the perspective of the buyer's agent like let's let's assume I'm a buyer's agent. I might have to show I might have to schedule five or ten properties to show in a day. Um, if you refuse to let me show the house, I'll just move on. And when my buyers ask me why we didn't see a house, they usually say drop it off the list. And and you may say why? It's because they're also spending their time looking at houses when they could be doing something else. They want to work on their schedule. And you may say, well, you know, who's more important, the seller or the buyer? Well, if you're trying to sell your house, the buyer is pretty darn important. Um, and you know, everyone has issues. Okay. And if you can, you know, if you can set up the showings during the day or in the evenings, you know, try to do that. Now, I'm not naive to think that sellers don't have issues. Sometimes you have, maybe you've got small children that you gotta, you gotta get out of the house. Maybe you have pets that you gotta get out of the house. Maybe, uh, you know, there, there could be all kinds of reasons. But I'm just telling you, from a practical point of view, it's not like, I mean, buyers are looking at, you know, five houses a day. They're not going to wait on yours. They just, they don't need to, even in this market. So just, just consider that. Um, and then number six is hope, host an open house. Now, I love open houses, okay? But with Corona, uh, I would say this, this answer, it, I would answer it with it, it depends. Uh, I went to an open house this weekend, one of the first ones since, uh, since Corona, and it was very busy. Everyone had masks on and it was quite unpleasant. Um, did one of the looky lose at the open house put in an offer on the house? I don't know. But serious buyers typically aren't waiting for the public open house to make a decision to purchase, in my experience. Uh, if the virus would go away, I might be more open to doing 
more open houses. I like having them because it can be convenient for the sellers, especially if they're living in the, in the home. Uh, it just depends though. On a current listing, I feel somewhat confident that we're going to get a great price with that one. So um, this is something you should consult with an agent that you, you know, believe in. Now there are going to be articles on, should you do an open house or shouldn't you do an open house? But it really does just depend. Uh, what's, what's, you, what you'll have a cynical agent say that the reason to have an open house, the reason why the uh, seller's agent wants an open house is because they can find new buyers. I found buyers at an open house, yes. Um, but I've also sold the house uh, because of an open house. But that was before Corona. And so I think it does matter. Uh, maybe maybe in the ro down the road things will change. Maybe the market will change. Certainly if the market is dead, you might as well have an open house because – you know, you aren't getting any exposure anyway. It just depends. So that's one of those things you want to talk to your agent about. Um, the next one is insist on professional uh, photography. And I didn't put that one in my notes because it's so obvious. Don't let an agent uh, take iPhone pictures of a blank wall and use that for your listing pictures. Get professional photos. Now, right now we've got a situation where we have these uh, we have these HDR blown out uh, photos, and it looks like they're all being taken at dusk. Well, those pictures aren't being taken at dusk; they're being photoshopped. And so, uh, will that go away? I mean, right now we're getting the first picture is the shot at dusk, and the second picture is uh, a drone photo of the roof, and it's just it's not appealing to me. But sometimes you do things for the sellers. Sometimes the sellers think that's great stuff. So uh, it's just 100% insist on professional uh, photography. The next one is review your listing online. I agree with that one. But I think it's super important not to be really picky with the listing. Of course, the I mean, of course, if the listing online shows four bedrooms and you only have three, that's a serious issue. And you should probably question your choice of that agent, like, they can't even get the listing right for bedrooms. That's that's like a real that's a real red flag. But if you don't like a word in the marketing remarks, that's a bit over the top. Uh, we write copy to sell the house to buyers. If you want copy that feeds your ego, that's different copy. Okay. And a lot of people, a lot of people have this uh, uh, strong feeling because they bought the home. It's it's the greatest home ever. Unfortunately, the buyers are looking at, you know. 10, 15, 20 other houses where the, the, buyer, the sellers feel the same way. And so you need to have copy that, that draws in uh, buyers. And we kind of have to go a little easy on the, uh, the compliments to the seller in, the, in those things. So that's a, I've, I've, I've run into that. Now, I had a listing uh, this past week where we had the 360 tour and one of the bedrooms – the arrow, you, there was a picture of the bedroom, but you couldn't physically get in the bedroom with, well, you couldn't virtually get in the bedroom without clicking the bedroom photo. And so sellers said, hey, I noticed this. Can you, can you fix it? We had it fixed within 15 minutes. No big deal. And those are the kinds of things. Makes perfect sense, uh, you know, to talk to your agent about it. And, and if you're uncomfortable about something, mention it. I don't think that uh, if an agent takes it personally, again, that's another red flag. Uh, number eight respond quickly to a purchase offer. Uh, I agree with this, but I would think it'd be obvious. Um, but I would say it's, it's not uncommon for sellers to be out of town or not tech savvy. So if I have like somebody that might be in their nineties, I'm usually doing everything by paper, which means I'm usually having to drive somewhere, uh, and present the offer. I can, I mean, I can use email, but it's not going to do me a whole lot of good. Um, and in that case, you can expect to wait. Uh, and you might wonder as a buyer, is the seller playing games? Well, maybe, but you're never going to know that with 100% certainty. Uh, you do want to abide by the constraints of the contract when you're in one. The dates matter. The time matters. So if you miss a date in one spot, don't be surprised if the other side calls you on it and leaves the deal. And, you know, it seems kind of harsh. You know, it says if the offer ends at midnight and the offer isn't accepted and the people move on, it seems kind of harsh, but if you have no constraints within a contract, you really don't have a decent contract in the first place. And if the people aren't abiding by the, uh, the constraints, there's no point in having the contract either. So 
I agree with that. Respond quickly. However, just know that the cell may be out of town, may not be tech savvy. And then finally, line up movers early. And so that's right here. I would uh, file that under in a perfect world. So right now, houses in St. Louis are selling in, in less than four days. Okay. If you consider a 30-day clo close, there's your window. However, things can happen. The deal could fall through. There could be a long delay in the sale. I don't advise trying to sell your home and buy a different one on the same day. Too much of a chance for a complete disaster, especially if your buyer can't close and you were banking on that money for your house. So, you know, if you line up movers early, that's great. And, uh, but it, it may not be realistic. So that was the article. I thought it was well written. Uh, there's probably, I mean, I saw one that was like a thousand tips. Well, I'm not gonna be able to read a thousand tips. <laughs> so, so I thought that was a good general, uh, general thing. I don't have much to add to that. I think that I think an inter an agent interview process when you're listing your home is very valuable if you know what you're trying to look for. Uh, it sh it it's the number one thing should be do you like this person enough to want to use them, and then do you trust that person enough to want to use them? Hopefully, those two things, like and trust, are both the same for you. I mean, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't trust them and if you don't like them in the beginning, why are you using them? And you say, well, it should be based on more objective factors. And I will put out a video at some point in time that goes over the big listing portals, okay, and what their criteria are uh, versus, versus reality. Now, let me just do a quick one for you. Let's just say that this agent statistically is, has every, every home they've sold has been uh, over 100% of the asking price. So, oh, that sounds great, right? What if they price the homes too low the whole time? What if they're intentionally pricing the homes too low? What if all those sellers are not getting the money that they deserve? So be careful with the statistics. Be, be, be very careful because what I've seen sold is like these great statistics that you would really want to use uh, in, in objectively determining what agents you should go with is all just baloney, absolute baloney. And if you did use those statistics, you, you'd have the worst agent ever. One other one real quick. So uh, number of closings, okay, number of transactions. So if you're the if you're if you're a seller, okay, and you say, oh, this person has a hundred different transactions, and this other person has thirty. Oh, the other one with a hundred must be the best one. Well, what if they have a team? And did you know that the, in the team, the buyer's agents don't have to use their name in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the statistics? So. So you could have a, a buyer's agency team with 30 agents, okay? And they could all be closing deals underneath this one guy's name or one gal's name. And it looks so impressive, but they haven't done any of those deals. Their agents have. So things like that you should really, really, you know, think about. But you should also trust the person. You should also like them. So I know I've ran long. I, you know, I just want you to get the information that, that could be helpful. If, if if I've helped one person on this, on this, uh, video or on the podcast, I'd be great with that. There's so many ways you can screw up a listing uh, on the sales side. And if I can just help a little bit, if I could just, you know, change a little bit, that, that would make me happy. So I uh, hope you all have a, a good rest of your day and I will catch you on the next one.